Okay, so Game of Thrones Season 6 is just around the corner. Game of Thrones Season 5 isn't available on DVD yet, but I have managed to get Season 4 quite recently. And I thought I'd do a little review on this because there's a few nice things about it and a few things that are a little odd about it that I thought I'd better uh, bring up. First of all, the box itself. Nice dramatic image there. Okay, the Game of Thrones swords. Okay, the swords that are usually melted into uh, the seat, the throne itself, seem to have been usurped by this crow or raven or blackbird. And they literally seem to either be falling out of it or being dropped from it. In fact, in some cases, it looks like it's actually made out of swords itself. And then you've got this tagline, all men must die. And that feels like it's almost been written by the most militant feminist you could ever hope to avoid if you're a man. Little quality sticker there from HBO. Yeah. The cast itself. And of course, if you know anything about Game of Thrones by pure reputation, if you haven't actually watched a single episode, then you'll know that it's infamous for uh, plot twists, uh, for getting its female cast members naked, uh, and for killing off members of the cast on a regular basis, such a regular basis that the, the entire cast seems to change for the most part for certain core members, and even then, they're likely to uh, drop off eventually at some point. And of course, season six has come, so who knows? Season six being the season uh, where, well, basically they caught up with the books by season five, and the Winds of Winter, as of this recording, hasn't been released yet. In fact, it's been delayed again, much to the annoyance of the fans of both the books and the TV show. And that, of course, means that although George R. R. Martin is known to have everything plotted, and the writers of the TV show know the, pl the, uh, the plot lines and so on, that hasn't stopped them from di taking complete diversions. They've gone, gone completely different routes in some cases, merged different characters together, omitted other characters, and so on and so forth. Um, yeah, so who knows, maybe season 6 will be faithful to the book that hasn't been released yet, or maybe it won't. The way season 5 ended, it's anybody's guess. And unlike some people, I'm not going to have a go at George or, or Martin for not releasing the book that fast. I'm not going to be one of those people. At the end of the day, if he doesn't feel it's ready for release, then he doesn't feel it's ready for release. If he needs more time to get it perfect, then he needs that time. But that's not what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk about this. Valer Morgulus. I assume that's how you pronounce it. And since I've done absolutely no research onto this, I've got no idea if that's how you pronounce it or what that even means. But there you go. There's the actual throne itself on the back, looking a lot smaller than it usually does in their most promotional art. And that's probably to make sure it doesn't end up overshadowing that. The uh, box feels nice and solid, and that's in turn inside this fella here. And if you don't know who that is, then you know nothing. Ha ha ha! And here we have possibly one of the most beautiful women I have ever laid eyes on. And then yet another beautiful woman that, uh, possibly not quite so much to my pleasing as that, but, you know, that's just personal choice. Although I will say that uh, the hair does look, look a lot better than it has done in other photos and throughout the show. Uh, it's obviously a wig. They can't go and dye her natural hair that colour all the time, because if they did, then she'd end up bald, because all the chemicals would just kill her hair. Anyhow. We've got warring brothers and sisters here. We've got a brother who is in love with that sister, who is likewise possibly in love with him, but uh, it's just such a minute with so-and-so, who really knows? And of course, they have gotten it on. Underneath that, we've got... Well, let's tell you what, let's come back to that. Their other brother, who's clasped in chains here. Then we've got their dad. And then we've got a whole load of them. Yeah, all nicely hidden. So let's just fold this up again. Just take a look. This thing with gateway folding like this, you have to have it down flat to uh, actually work properly, otherwise it just doesn't. But a whole lot of uh, guff in here. That's the episode synopsis and so on. See, there's all the episodes. Episode turn and so on. But adverts for various with a series on this, and we've got the official collector's models, and Daenerys here, 
the main angel looks more like a sort of sorceress there. And she's one of the few characters who neither gets physical like Jon Snow would, or gets mystical like other characters are progressively getting more and more uh, involved in in some cases. Although she does have dragons, I suppose that does count. Uh, what else? That looks like... Uh, I can never pronounce his name properly, but... That's Pat Wilmer he was working in Season 1, isn't it? Oh well, who knows. Various other bits. Bobblehead. Game of Thrones Season 3 and 4. Artwork, I assume. A t-shirt. Various accessory pins and glassware, even. Well, that'll be nice. Alright, so who else have we got here? Oh, we've got Natalie Dormer, whose character I keep forgetting the name of. We've got me, you know, that girl from Doctor Who who can't die. What do you mean, which girl from Doctor Who can't die? You know, that girl from Doctor Who can't die. We've got the cripple boy who, despite being crippled, still seems to be grown. Don't think I've seen him in anything else. If you have seen him in something else, please let me know, because uh, I am a bit curious. Uh, we've got Jean Grey. We've got Michael Jackson's Plastic Surgeon's Worst Nightmare. And we've got a chrome-plated Stormtrooper who really didn't get as much screen time as we thought she was going to get uh, in The Force Awakens, which was a bit of a shame. Because that said, we really did get a good feel for, uh, for her performance, but, you know, there should have been more. But never mind. Well, that's the Season 4 fold-out box set looked at. And now comes the awkward bit, putting it away. Now, every time I've tried this, I kept somehow managing to get this completely wrong. Um, hmm. Does this go on this, or does this go on this, and this goes on this? Yeah, that's it. So, I'll put Amelia away this time, put that in there, put that up there. And we're done. Okay, that's got to be the first time I have ever managed to do that right. Every other time, well, I basically wound up trying to put this in here, and that just doesn't work. But that said, the box itself was already a bit battered to start with. It already had damage to the sides and the edges and so on in various different places. So the boxes, you know, they're obviously not designed to be chucked about a lot, but then what box is? But, yeah. It's a nice little set. It'll look quite nice and dramatic. Pride of place in the centre of anybody's collection. It's making a statement, it's making an impact. And I like that, and that's one thing you don't get if you just download everything or just stream all these AV shows all the time. You know, it's nice to have something physical to uh, remember stuff with.